we get an awful lot of rain. And we've got a saying that if we can see Dartmoor, it's going to rain, but if we can't see Dartmoor, it is raining. Farming in the location that we do with the hills around us, we're always very conscious of the field runoff and track runoff with the River Yeo being so close to the edge of the farm. When it rains here, water runs down the track and collects everything. You get a thick soup of sediment and nutrients. And the last thing you want is that going into the river. I'm Andrew Mather and we're at Hallstone Farm, Arlington, uh, near Barnstable, which is on the western edge of Exmoor. Uh, this farm is at the top of the River Yeo catchment. We're a thousand feet above sea level. The farm itself is 110 acres. We run at the moment about 400 ewes, which are split lambing, um, 100 approximately lamb in January, with 300 approximately in May. With that number of ewes, but I do take about 27 acres of grass keep. When it rains, we get a tremendous amount of runoff. It picks up uh, any uh, nutrient runoff from the fields and any uh, sheep dung and all the mud from the yards and any, also any diesel or oil that is spilt and it all runs down, head into the river Yo. You can see all the water running and pouring, which comes down the track beside the shed where I have to travel with uh, the tractors and going into the sheds. Right, get me fluffy dog. Oh. He's not there. This is not a working dog, he's just a pet dog and he, he's very fluffy and he just runs around behind me all the time really. And, and plays a lot, don't you? You're a big softy. Coming at night, but this year because it's so cold. So Tom Hines from the North Devon Biosphere came out and looked around the farm to see what I do and to see what problems we'd got. And he thought that we qualified for the grant from the scheme that they are running. They then employed an ADAS consultant who came out and did a study and uh, put together a report on what was needed to solve the issues. Right up. Yeah. This is where the project starts. The water would wash down through from the field. So we're gonna have a trap which will encourage the water to go into pipes, which come all the way down through here. We're now in the bottom corner of the yard. Um, where we shall have a sediment trap where the, all the solids settle to the bottom. The clean water then flows on to the constructed wetland ponds. There's two ponds and the first one starts off deep and then goes shallow and the second one goes from shallow to deep. Uh, once the ponds fill up with water we'll be able to plant the reeds and irises in there. We're planting them for three reasons. One is that they'll slow the flow of water down, which allows the sediment to go to the bottom. The second one is they take up and use any nutrients that happen to be still in the water. And the third reason is they encourage wildlife to come. So that when the water goes on out, it should be quite clean down towards fields and then on into Barnes Westry and out to the sea. We are situated approximately six to seven miles downstream on the River Yeo from Andrew Mather. We are at Stoneyard Farm. I'm Phil Morris and I farm on the family farm alongside my father Ron and brother Chris on the outskirts of Barnstable. We farm approximately 280 acres of land for beef production. Good girls and boys, well done. We, we buy and store cattle, approximately eight to 40 months old. They will continue with us for about 12 months when they'll be sold onto the fat market. We house cattle all winter and we grow fodder, haylage and corn for, for feed. So the issue we had here was as the water came down the track, forming a heavy soup sediment at the bottom, a large percentage would have gone down towards the cattle yard, which puts heavy loading onto the dirty water pumps and into the dung store. The rest of the water would have headed down the track towards the bale yard, which is a heavily used track, so it picked up a lot of sediment which would have continued on down across the neighbour's field towards the River Yeo. So the solution for us was to put in three diverter ditches higher up the track to reduce the overall volume of water coming down to the permanent concrete cambered base. So as you can see, the water will continue down the new concrete track, which we have cambered to catch all the flow of water, which will then come in to the sediment trap. 
This is where the bulk of the heavy solids will be kept and trapped. Catching the sediment is a big benefit to us. We're then able to return that back onto the land. And the, and the last thing we want to do is lose those good nutrients from the farm. The water will then flow from the sediment trap through the pipe and then into our baffled ditches. So what we're currently doing, we're placing railway sleepers in on each baffled ditch. This is to make a trough shape so they hold the water. This is all about slowing the water down. I think it's the most important thing we learnt from this process is getting the water to slow down. So we will make this into four baffled ditches. By the time it gets out of the fourth ditch, it should be very, very clean and very, uh, a trickle really. So we should be able to maintain all of the sediment and all of the water on farm without it getting into the River Yeo. We've worked with some really interesting farmers who've been really positive about the work that we've been um, helping with. We learnt lots, they learnt lots, and they've always followed the advice that we've offered um, and they've created some fantastic habitats. Yeah, they're, they're, they've taken quite well, really. They? They're, yes. they're quite firm in the ground. and uh, All these irises, they came from my father's pond just back down the road and they seem to have taken quite well, really. And they should do well this summer. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. Absolutely. One of the things about wetlands is in order to construct them you can use farm labour, you can use farm machinery. It just needs a little bit of advice to come in from somebody to make sure that it all stays on the right side of any regulations. There's plenty of options for farmers to get involved with constructed wetlands and we definitely welcome more people seeking advice to find out more about what can be done. I, I would recommend others to take advice that North Devon Biosphere can give. Their help has been invaluable. We wouldn't have we wouldn't have taken on a project like this without them. Yeah, I would recommend it to other farmers. Uh, it, obviously, it won't suit everybody, but um, for the majority, I think there is gains to be made because uh, I'm having improvements done to my farm that I would have never been able to afford to do myself. The benefits will be the fact that there won't be the mud outside the sheds, so it won't get taken into the into the sheep sheds. So I shall need less bedding. And we're also moving our small caravan site to just above these ponds so that they can actually benefit from the ponds and the wildlife as well. And some of our rescued animals, the pigs and Gerald the donkey, will be there as well and add to the tourist attraction. The caravans are going to go around the top here so when it's all finished being developed and everything they'll have uh, all the views of all the wildlife that comes onto the pond as well, like the dragonflies and the damselflies. So we're solving the farm's runoff problems and making a nice wildlife area for the tourists, killing two birds with one stone. This, this project benefits the farm and the river environment, so it's, it's just a win-win situation for us. By slowing the water down, we are retaining all the sediment on farm and it's also reducing the flash flood risk, which is coming off the farm down into the river and on into Barnstable. We're a long way away from the sea here, but at least we know we've got the peace of mind that the water that we're sending on down is as clean as it possibly could be. The River Yeo will flow through Barnstable into the Tor and Torridge Estuary and out to sea, so there's less pollution in the sea as well. Down here at the estuary is where all the water ends up. So having worked with farmers up at the top of the catchment, the improvements that we've made in water quality will obviously benefit the estuary itself so that ultimately the estuary can be better for fish, for wildlife, for birds. As more farmers take up these options, we're going to have cleaner rivers coming down into the estuary. It's going to benefit the swimmers, the surfers, the kayakers, all those that use the sea in the estuary. And we're going to have more people enjoying both the wildlife as well as the water.